We're talking about sex, but sex after 40 years old. Okay, what happens at that time in your life? Dr. Karen Gordon is here to talk to us all about it. She's done the research. <laughs> I've done the research professionally That's and maybe right. personally. Oh, well, Woo! well, well. Well, you know, it, I mean, it affects all of us, right? And oh. this, the research is actually pretty awesome. The research yeah. is awesome. Yeah. And yes, you should be practicing in real life yes. because sex is all part of yes. having a healthy yes. life. Yes, absolutely. We've got uh, good stats here. So this is from Consumer Health Digest. Men are over 40% more likely to experience a midlife crisis, which decreases their sex drive. Correct. So yes. fit, we're not necessarily on the same page. By no, gender, in not. terms of our sex drive right. cycles, right, and that's why it's just really good to understand the research, understand the data. Yes. So while women are kind of going like this, men, there's 40 more. 40, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and part of it, yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, right. okay, great for that visual. All right, yeah. okay, all right. So women in their yeah. 30s to early 40s up until menopause are significantly more than younger women. Yes, correct. And yeah. part of it, I think, uh, is that women were more comfortable with their bodies. Their bodies. Yes. Comfortable with their bodies, with who we are, our confidence, and we're more confident to actually say with what we want. Vocalize. We vocalize. This is it. what I like. Yes. This is what works yes. for me. This is what Absolutely. doesn't work for me. Absolutely. Stop. That's right. <laughs> right. Or go. Don't do that. Or, or ooh, go. I like that. Turn or to the no. left. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. You don't mind. Well, you yeah, don't, you, you don't, don't mind. You don't it. mind. You don't yeah. mind. Exactly. Okay, and then finally, uh, you've got another stat there. The yes, last stat. Uh, the last stat. Okay, so Journal of Sexual Medicine says women over 40 are more satisfied with their sex life, and 70% are reaching orgasm. 70%. Yeah, which is very good. Because yes. a lot of people are surprised to hear that a lot of women do not yes. reach orgasm. Yes. And that's partially because there isn't that open communication Correct. happening Correct. Um, when it comes Correct. to sex. And one of the things I found really interesting around this study is that it really, it, it really kind of spikes in that 30s and 40s before menopause. Right. And, and some of the research was saying it's actually it's higher than even in your 20s. Right. Right. So this is sex really drive. sex drive. Yes. Okay. And it's actually, and, it, and it's almost but right before menopause. You've got a window mm -hmm. where it's just everything's kind of ramping up. Yeah. So you might be like, okay, I want to be part of those stats. Yeah, that's right. right? I want to be part of those stats, but ooh, yeah. I'm not part of those stats. And there might be a reason and why you're not part of those stats. Which is why we want to talk about what you can do to be part of the stats of a really healthy sex life. Okay. Very good. important. Very important that we can all have this. Yeah. I can just imagine all the things that might be standing in the way. Yes. of a sex drive. Yes. You've got a list. Yeah, so the first one is low energy and stress. And so what mm. I thought about is conversations I've had with clients at our practice. And so this is, this is a very common one. I'm exhausted, stressed, and I would just rather be sleeping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so like so many like, hours These are all lines. I'm not making this. Yet. Yes, right? Mm -hmm. People are like, it's like a lot of like, I'd just rather be sleeping. Uh, yeah. Second one is low interest. I used to enjoy sex, but now I'm not that interested. I don't feel connected to my partner. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather be watching a movie or reading a book. Right. Right. <laughs> marriage, if you're in a long-term yes. relationship or in a marriage, it's a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Absolutely. So you go through ebbs and flows. Absolutely. And there are times where it's like, oh, I'm kind of sick of you right now, yes. but uh, I do yes. have a new book on my I nightstand. Know. It's like, Woo! Yes. Right? Yes. So it's understandable. Yes. Absolutely. And the third one is little time. And this is a really big one, um, especially for parents with younger children. It's like we're running. We, our schedule is so full. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, I just don't have the time. I'm running around all day and I have little time to myself, let alone my spouse. Yeah. So if you were to really look at how people manage their time, a lot of times spouses are like at the bottom. They get mm -hmm. the crumbs. They're yeah. not getting the feast. Right. They're getting the little crumbs that are on the floor. And then people wonder why they don't have a great relationship. Right. And that's that's We need to, we need to we have structure to start. for the feast. That's right. That's right. Yes. When you're restructuring things, yes. uh, you've got three solutions that yes. might help you, help you sort of make that sex drive a bit. Yes. So number one suggest? is energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's a question for you. Question for you. The number one thing that, that energizes you? Cupcakes. Okay. <laughs> The like thing that energizes yeah. me the most yes. is fitness. It's fitness. It makes me so, ha so happy. Yes. It, makes, it, it makes my mental uh, capability, like, it makes me even. Me even. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm not like a big yeller. I, I don't yeah. feel, you know, sad a lot. And I right. think it's because right. of my fitness. Uh, it's my fitness. So this is a thing for everybody to think about, is what's the one thing, just one thing that is thing that is going to be energizer. Yeah. It's going to energize you physically, emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, everything. What is that? And so it could be sleeping. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, it is sleep. You want to sleep. I have to have to get my sleep. Yeah. It, like it is so critical. Um, exercises, exercise is a good, but it could be sleep, it could be mm -hmm. exercise, yoga, running. Yeah. It could be hanging out with awesome girlfriends, girlfriends. We all mm -hmm. those come home, we're like, woo! Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Friends, that Brent's like, you go out with those girls more because I come back and I'm so energized. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm so inspired. Like, I'm like, 
Look at you keep going. And you, they, he knows. <laughs> you keep going with you those keep girls. You keep with those girls because you can tell, right? With really great girlfriends, You're it right. just energize you and inspire you. And then you've got the mental energize. If I read a really good book, yeah. If or if I see a really good romantic movie, yes. Woo that yes, off it goes. Right? It goes right. You kind of figure out what is it? What is it that we all need? And kind of now. the self aware, the self aware we need. So number one is you know your energizer. Yeah. Okay. So key into key into yes. that make you feel energized. Energized because you need that because you need that energy for good sex. Okay. Okay. Number two is you set a sex goal. Set a sex goal. Obsessed with goals in our culture. We set right. goals on finance, on how many steps we how many steps we right. add, how many RSPs yeah. we have. Set a sex goal. Okay. Cool. Okay. Sex goal minimum, and I mean minimum once a week. Minimum. Week. Minimum. Okay. It's supposed to be once a week, just for literally for connection. For conne connection. For connect. Say, you know, a lot of the sex experts and research will say about two. So we'll say about two. To is like in your in the really good. It, every yeah. couple's going to be different. Now, different. Now, let's yeah. every once once a month, and you, that's going to be too. It's going to be too high of a too high of a job. You want to be maybe aiming for that. Mm-hmm. Once okay, a week set for a sure. goal, and then set a sure. goal, and then you have a radar. Okay, I've got. We've got to make sure that we're kind of connecting to that. Do you have the checklist? Have the checklist on the. <laughs> We go prioritize your partner over your kids. Okay, this is super. This is super important. When you go in the house, who's the first person you give a hug and kiss to? The dog. The dog. Answer. <laughs> Wrong answer. Okay. Okay. Next. 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 Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, then the kids. Oh, kids. Okay. It really should be hu husband first. Okay. Husband dog first. Husband. Dog first. husband. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. So husband first. <laughs> husband. <laughs> kids. Dog. Got it. In that order. You can get them all kind of lined up. But you want to prioritize so that your kids know who is the priority, and it needs to be a spouse. It's very important. We yeah. have done something with their power imbalance and family dynamics, That's where wrong. people are putting kids before spouses. Yeah. And husbands are getting these crumbs. Yeah. They want. The, yeah. They want the feast. Yeah. You say to you say to your husband, we were, I was watching City Line, and I'm going to start giving you the feast. <laughs> all right. Give yes. Feast. We're gonna give you that face, and then you just watch out how tuned in he is. Right. Because when men have that, when they're getting the physical affection, they will be so—they're so good to you. Yeah, good, good yes. tips. I yes. love it.